Hello everyone, it is Sunday, and that means anachronism. Today we have Marcus Claudius Marcellus, a Roman with no attack grid, and we will see why in a moment. He is of the element of metal, and he has 8 health, 3 speed, 1 experience, that's a bit of a letdown, and 1 strength. And his ability, Gladius Romae, is an action. If you are in another warrior's attack grid, make a basic attack on that warrior. Your attack rolls gain plus one, and this attack deals no more than one damage. That's why he has no attack grid. Known as the Sword of Rome, Marcellus conquers Syracuse, as well as securing innumerable other military victories for the Republic. So, they are talking about the Republic, which means it is before uh, the Emperors and before 44 BC. I did not know about this guy anyway, so I don't know when uh, he lived. Ah, from the top of my head. Next up, inspiration. It is a deity. Apollo, god of the sun. Well, actually, he pulls the chariot that uh, the sun is bound to. So, initiative of five. He is fire. And he has the ability Cura Dei, which is a reveal ability. Your attack rolls gain plus one this round. God of Art, Light and Healing. Apollo pulls the sun across the sky behind his four-horse chariot. And you know what is funny? There is a myth, actually. The, the Greeks also had this uh, Apollo as a god. And I would like to tell you the, the myth. He had a son. And the son was called uh, Phaethon. And Phaethon... Uh, for some reason, he was uh, he stepped into the uh, chariot and he drove it. But as soon as he took off, uh, he knew that it was actually a little bit too much. Apollo was used to, to uh, pulling the sun and Phaeton was not. So, um, yeah, the chariot crashed and it became uncontrollable. So, it was crashing down so low uh, above the earth that the African continent turned into a desert. And the Ethiopian people were black-skinned because of this. Because of the heat, the scorched. And henceforward, according to the Greeks, there were black people. So, you see, um, everything has... An explanation in mythology. People were always looking for answers. Some say that um, this event, where Phaethon uh, rode the chariot of his father, also created the Milky Way. So, um, yeah. And it did some damage to the, the river of the Nile. The river Nile. So, there is that Mr. Apollo... The god of light. Next up, we have a weapon, pilum. The pilum is a uh, is the spear. is a typical Roman spear. No other folk used it. Initiative of seven. It has a strength of one, and the attack grid goes both ways in front of you. With a plus two and a plus zero on the left side, and a plus one and a plus one on the other side. So pole arm, one hand. Yes, each. Legionnaire, each soldier of Rome carried two of these while marching. Um, when battle formations were set up, they stood in formation, in line, in rank. And one of them was put on the ground, the other one was uh, held up, and they threw it. As soon as they threw it, they, put, they took the other one, threw it again, and there were two waves of uh, Pila. So, uh, what made this thing uh, superior to other throwing objects? You see that very thin metal piece over here with the little arrow on top? These things, when thrown, and sometimes they will be, put in, uh, they will be thrown in a shield, like you see here and here, because it is so thin and the wooden shaft was weighted, so it bent and the shield became useless. So the enemy had to throw it away and uh, 
It couldn't get the pilum out. So it was useless. And the pilum could, could not be thrown back at the Romans. Very important. So it has the ability uh, Perutilis, which is an action. Discard, discard to deal one damage to another warrior. And discard that warrior's face-up shield card, if any, to imply the bending of the pilum, etc, etc. This metal tip javelin bends on impact, disabling shields and making it impossible to throw back. Yeah, that's basically what I just said. So, next up. Ah, my favorite piece of armor. And I have one of these myself in my room on a mannequin with a tunic, a toga, uh, a sword, a uh, dagger, a belt, shoes and a helmet. Yes, I have the complete package. I only need a sword and a pilum. Uh, the shield and a pilum. So, the Lorikai Segmentata, which is uh, for initiative. This was a very, very, very good piece of armor. Um, if people would slash you, and even stabbing could be uh, harmless to this armor. Except if the opponent uh, stabs you just underneath here, but yeah, then it would just go straight through the plates and uh, harm your organs and such. The pros of this armor is that all the individual parts here are uh, tied with leather strips. And it makes for a very mobile armor. So you can just turn and, and, and feel no constraint. You can just fall on the ground and stand up with uh, no difficulty actually all right so lorica segmentata for initiative it is a armor torso it has the ability mobilis just like i said it's very mobile when you take more than two damage reduce that damage to two the segmented armor lightweight and flexible revolutionizes chest protection and so it did and finally we have this special one it is a tome disciplina uh, it has six initiative and yeah it's basically the, the discipline that the uh, Roman army had so the ability civis pacem parabellum uh, after you make an attack roll you may increase the value of one of the dice by one if you want initiative this turn if the dice are now doubles the attack may result in a critical hit cool the exceptional discipline of the Roman troops ensures their success across hundreds of battlefields. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, oh, I could blabber on about the Romans forever. It's an awesome people and it has some awesome new things in warfare. So, um, yeah, next up is another Roman, but one for the arena. Not so much as his soldier, just for the arena. So, see you all next time. Bye.